Hey YouTube, Jordan Visco here from RC Printer. Uh, so I've been spending the last few days building and then creating a build guide for this super sweet uh, ski ride 3D printed snowmobile and just hoping that it would snow uh, at some time in the near future because we haven't had any snow yet. And then just this morning around 10 o'clock it uh, just started snowing and you can see there is snow everywhere. A couple inches on the ground and so conditions are perfect. So we're gonna get this sled out there. Um, we have a 2S LiPo battery in it right now, so we're gonna give it a try on that just to make sure the new higher powered motor that we put in it uh, isn't gonna cause any problems, and then we'll juice it up to 3S and uh, see how she goes. So let's get out there and have some fun. Wow, tons of power even on a little 2S LiPo. Okay, so we're back inside here now, and as you can see, just in that first uh, couple of minutes of running, I've completely blown my herringbone gear. I'm gonna try and just reprint it and see how well it does. Maybe it didn't mesh very well the first time or something. You can see on this one as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty destroyed. Okay, here are the two new 3D printed herringbone gears. Uh, they look like they printed out perfectly, so we'll get those back on there. And then we also have this guy right here, which I printed, which is a little 3D printed motor shim, which is going to help the motor sit back a little bit from the edge of the frame. I need it to sit back just so that my pinion meshes properly with the spur gear, this guy over here. And secondly, I noticed this motor was generating a lot of heat. This is printed out of PETG, well as this is printed out of PLA, so I hope that this does a bit of a better job not warping under that kind of stress. All right, there we go. We got the herringbone gears reinstalled again. Uh, we also have the motor reinstalled, and we have the new little shim in place, which is five millimeters, which was the perfect size for this application. The pinion and spur are meshing perfectly there, so. We hopefully will not have any more gear troubles and we'll get it back outside and uh, see how she does. I gotta say, works pretty darn well on a 2S. Not super stable though. All right, I feel like my little 2S battery might be dying out here, so we're gonna go ahead and pop the 3S in and see how it does. All right, out goes the 2S. And in goes this much bigger 3S. Holy mackerel, you can feel the difference.
Okay, so one thing I have noticed uh, with this new TPU track is that it does tend to slip off a bit easier than the PLA one. This is the third time now I've had it happening with the TPU one. I do have it tightened up. You can see right there. I've got it tightened up almost right to the end. Um, and it's not just a one side or the other issue. I've had it slide off both sides, so I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to do about that. I will say, though, that I am super impressed with this new Rocket V3 motor and the 120 amp ESC that we've put in it. It's got a ton of power. It's definitely much more exciting to drive than the little cheapo brushless I had in my other ski ride. And I think because of that extra power as well, that might be part of the reason why I keep blowing off the track. The track being built out of TPU though has definitely saved me a few times already. I'm definitely running along the ground really hard and I haven't damaged the track paddles uh, barely at all. Um, loving that, just got to find a way to get that track to stay on a little bit better. And then again, with the ride height. You can see there, um, we're just riding too high, so I need to get some new shocks in there or just change the springs out maybe on those ones. Get that ride down another inch or so. Okay, so I was having a bit of a problem with my track here slipping off. And these here are the stock rear rollers that it comes with. And they're a bit small and they're round. They don't have any uh, spikes or anything on them to stick into the track. And so what I've done is I 3D printed some of the mods here. This is a rear roller by a designer named Flarn Plarn. And this is one by a designer named Millicart. Basically, they replace these. They still have spots for the bearings to go in. So they would just sandwich right in there. And they're a lot bigger, as you can see, than the stock one. Uh, this one especially is huge. And they just slide right in here in these little holes, just like that. And they feel like they're going to be super tight and do a good job of holding the track in place. I really like the idea of this one, which has the flat spots on it, um, which are going to do a good job of locking into each piece of the track. And I like this one as well, just because it's nice and big and I feel like that'll help but I think I'm going to try this one to start and see how it does. I do like the flat spot and then I do like the way that these little teeth are shaped as well. They look like they're just going to be maybe a little bit more sturdy industrial than the teeth on this one although I think either one is going to do a really good job of holding your track on. All right so there we are installed and you can see it looks just like a super super snug very nice fit in there with those uh, six-sided wheels with the little uh, pyramid teeth on them. So pretty happy with that. We'll give it a shot. All right, so another issue I've been having with my ski ride is with these steering arms here. They're a bit fragile and I definitely tend to bust off these end bits. Um, and so this one here is busted off on the inside where it connects to the servo arm, but I often bust them off on the outside as well. In the mods file for Ski Ride, you can find this guy and it's a steering rack made by a user named Jibberjabs. It slides in right there. Um, and then the servo arm sits on top here and we'll slide it back and forth um, along this little hole. And it's got these little grooves in the back here so that your screws which attach to your lower A arm uh, won't catch on it. Once it's in there, you just connect a little ball joint here and a little ball joint there, and then you can either use some three millimeter threaded rod to connect those together or a proper tie rod if you have one. We're gonna go ahead and get that installed, see if we can get our steering to be just a little bit more reliable. All right, there we go. Installation of the new jibber jab steering rack is complete. The other thing I did was I changed the springs on my shocks. So I have these new super lightweight springs and that's going to make my sled ride just a little bit lower. So I hope that'll help as well. Uh, stop it from flipping over quite so much because the last ones I had in there were super tight. The last thing on it that I'm not terribly excited about is uh, this hood here keeps popping off all the time as I'm driving. I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to do about that yet but I think I'm gonna end up just using some elastic bands for now to go on top. And the reason that it's popping off is probably just because I didn't use the proper magnets that I was supposed to when doing my build. So make sure when you do yours that you use the right magnets. So let's get it back together and get it out on the snow.
So we keep falling over because the snow is so deep, but if you look at that rear track, with those new rollers in there, it's just moving absolutely perfect. So super happy with that. Alright guys, before I let you go, just wanted to do a little recap here and talk about some of the things we've learned over the past couple weeks with the testing that we've done with the new ski ride. First off, the new motor in ESC we have, the 540 brushless censored motor with 120 amp ESC. Uh, we're using a Surpass Hobby Rocket V3 and I'm loving it. Way more power than the cheapo combo kits you can get on Amazon, so that's definitely a thumbs up. One thing we learned right off the bat is make sure that you lube your gears, otherwise those herringbone gears in there, they're just gonna melt on you, so uh, that's my bad. Definitely make sure you lube yours. Also, if the pinion on your motor shaft isn't lining up with the spur gear properly, you may need to use a shim like I did. I'll have a link to the shim that I built in the description below and make sure you print that out of PETG or ABS so that it's a bit more heat resistant. Uh, this new more powerful motor is definitely going to generate some more heat. Now when it comes to steering, you can stick with the stock steering arms but I do think you're going to break those quite a bit so I would recommend upgrading to the jibber jab steering rack that I've installed on this one. You can find that in the mods file that comes with the ski ride as well. The designer build it better has actually redone the steering in the arms. Um, on the ski ride and they're available as mods as well so those might be worth checking out I haven't had time to check them out yet but they look pretty good you will need a few extra pieces like some uh, ball joints and stuff so just be prepared for that the TPU track is a total win in my opinion uh, it is a bit more flexible so you are going to have a bit more stretching so it is important to have uh, proper rollers on the back and the stock rollers that come with the ski ride aren't going to be quite big enough and aren't going to catch the track well enough so one of those two mods that we were playing around with there uh, works really well and I'll have the names of those in the description below as well. The sled itself is going to get a bit tipsy and wobbly especially if you're driving it in powder so I do not recommend going with really cheap shocks. Um, I still have really cheap shocks here in the back of my ski ride and the ones in the back don't matter so much but the ones up front you are going to want some higher quality ones. These ones are from a Traxxas Slash. Um, I did have to install them upside down because they're big bore and they're a little bit thicker so um, they're a little bit harder to fit in there but um, they just perform like so much better than, than cheap ones and you can change the oil in them depending on the stiffness that you'd like so that's something I'd really recommend as well. The polar body panels I think are a total win. Um, I do love the look, it matches my sled perfectly actually. Um, I did end up breaking off this front little uh, windscreen here. Right there, this is printed out of PETG and it works really well. Um, obviously I did not use the proper magnets in there and so my hood's falling off all the time so I end up having to use an elastic to hold it on like a gomer so don't recommend that. So definitely do it properly the first time. And then one thing I did which I found really useful and you might as well is I actually routed the on off switch for my ESC just to the outside of the sled here and uh, turning it on and off and taking this on and off all the time is just kind of a pain in the butt so I would recommend doing that as well. Uh, makes life a lot easier for you. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. As always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed projects to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check us out at rcprinter.com.